this is a system I need to create so I can take myself out of it. Do you have any advice? Yeah, start documenting it. You know, start writing down every step that you do. That's the beginning of putting a system in place. You know, just like you said, you had the Trello, you know, which is basically, you can do that on a whiteboard. You know, here's step one, step two, step three. Once you have those steps together, you are at the beginning of making a process. So step one, put the item in the box, right? Well, what's the process around putting an item in the box? You gotta know exactly what size box it's gonna need. Does it need any extra packaging, mm. you know, for padding? We need to know that. You feel what I'm saying though? It's There's like, so okay, where's things, the box yeah. sit? You need to go, go over there and grab that box. All of those things. So first, just write down what you're doing. Then you're gonna go back and figure out what are all the steps to get to what you're doing. And bam, now you've got a process for something you do. And your documents, your documents on process should be that I can walk in, hand that person a doc, and they can get the outcome that they're supposed to need. And so until you hand it off to somebody, you'll never know if the process is right. What's going on, everybody on YouTube? Hello, everybody on iTunes listening on the podcast. Steve Rakin here. Welcome to the Rakin Profit Show, episode number 31. We are flying through the episodes. Today, we are going to be talking with John Lawson. Title of the show is How to Live the Lazy Laptop Life with John Lawson. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, John is an e-commerce expert, best-selling author on Amazon, a social media guru, and what's even cooler is he's generated millions selling online. So he definitely has the experience. We're going to have a lot of fun today. John, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm super fantastic, man. Stoked to be here. Wow, I've made the big time. Oh, man, you're in the game. <laughs> Coach put you in, man. Coach yes. took you off the bench and put you in let's, the game. Let's see if I can make it happen. Super cool, man. Funny thing is I've, I've known about you for a while. I actually believe I saw you at the, you spoke over at the ACE conference by, by Sam Cohen had thrown that on, but I didn't know you at the time. And I, you know, it was, it's just hard to connect with everybody, man, but your speech there for anyone who was there, it was super cool. I really liked the part about outsourcing and virtual assistants. So maybe we'll chat a little bit about that today, but John, he runs a website, lazylaptoplife.com, Facebook group. He's doing a lot of really, really cool things. And something funny I want to share with you before we got it, we get into the show is the other day, and he's smiling because he already knows what I'm going to get into. The other day I was scrolling through my Facebook and all of a sudden I saw a post from John. It was actually a video and it was something along the lines of Ty Lopez reached out to me or Ty Lopez wants to talk to me. I forget exactly what it said, but do you want to kind of share that story really quick of what happened to you? And I'm going to link up the, the post and video okay, after, good. but I think people are going to find it really hilarious. Good. So I won't give it, I won't give it all away, but at right. any rate, the basic thing is, is that I was sitting in my office the other day and me and my assistant, who is like my niece. So, and we're talking back and forth. So she's sitting right here and I'm just talking to her, talking to her. And at the corner of my eye, you know, I see that something popped up. Somebody, you know, it's Facebook, so people are always trying to friend you up or anything. So I saw a friend request, but I didn't pay it any attention. So I'm looking this way, and of course, she's looking back at me. She happened to look at my screen. She's like, Ty Lopez just tried to friend you. I was like, for real? You know, and it had already, you know, dissipated. <laughs> so I was like, are you serious? So I was like, let me go back in and uh, check, and I'll be darned. There was Ty Lopez trying to friend me up. I'm like, whoa, Ty Lopez has hit me up as a friend. So I went ahead and accepted his friend request. You know, I gave it some contemplation because, you know, I don't really know him. It's like, I'm teasing. You know, so I was like, yeah, cool. That's awesome. And then we have all of a sudden, maybe two seconds later, he starts having a conversation with me. And the post is basically me just recording my conversation with Ty Lopez. And I don't even know why 
something in my head made me say, turn the record button on. And literally, guys, I have the screen capture of our conversation. I ended up turning it into a couple of videos, uh, video one, video two, you know, and really video two is the best one. But it's worth watching, guys. If he's going to put the link there, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But the end of the video, you don't want to miss. Guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> All I could say is Walgreens gift card, right? I think yeah, that's there what you go. Was. Walgreens this- gift card. <laughs> Definitely check that out. I am going to link it below in the show notes on the podcast and in YouTube. But in any event, uh, John, let's share your story of how you got started within e-commerce and kind of talk a little bit about about your backstory for some context. So long story short, I had started doing eBay in 2001. And the reason why I started doing eBay is because if a lot of you guys, you know, might not remember, this is a long time ago now, but back in the early 2000s, it was all about flipping houses. Flipping houses was the way to riches, right? And so a friend of mine had come to me, I was working a regular nine to five, had good credit. He came to me and asked me to, you know, if I wanted to partner with him and flip a house. He's like, I know how to find the house. I just really need the credit guy. So I was the credit guy and we ended up financing the house through my credit. Well, long story short here, that house never got flipped. It was a total money pit disaster. And I was about to file bankruptcy. And during that process, I talked to a friend of mine. He's like, why don't you sell some stuff on eBay? And I was like, uh, you know, I think in the eBay just for like old socks or something. How do you <laughs> sell? And I started selling books on eBay. That's when I got started. Basically, it started snowballing and I never ended up fulfilling that need to go bankrupt. I didn't go bankrupt. I ended up three years later leaving my corporate job and haven't looked back. So I've been here doing, you know, the lazy laptop life (laughs) for, you know, how many years is that now? 14 years. Wow. It's crazy. So that's cool, man. So you, you, you started with the attempted the flipping houses. It was the, the craze back then. I remember there was like all these late night infomercials and like every single commercial was like, I forgot what that guy's name was. Carlton Sheets. Was he the one? I owned the course, bro. (laughs) <laughs> on cassette. I own it on cassette. I own it on cassette. Uh, so so you you started you were, you were you know getting ready to file bankruptcy. You found eBay. Were you doing that for for 10, 12, 13, you know, these 14 years you've been doing it or have you transitioned over into other platforms as well as e-commerce your only is is eBay your only baby when it comes to e-commerce or anything no, else? No, 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 no. I mean, so let's say so around that time in, in 2004, I had started doing my own website as well. So we had the website, we had the eBay. 2005, six ish, I was like platinum power seller on eBay. And the deal was Amazon was starting to launch a third party system, right? And so they came to all of the biggest eBay sellers and asked to beta test their third party system. So I was actually part of the oh, wow. uh, FBA third party system. It wasn't even FBA. They didn't have the FBA part. It was just, you know, third party sellers. So I was there. I didn't really take it seriously though, you know, cause eBay was my primary focus. <laughs> I knew how to do it, but eBay started, you know, doing what eBay had done at that time. And it just wasn't conducive for my, I like the way I said that. I said that so PC, but it wasn't conducive for our business. And something told me to just try Amazon, like seriously try. I think at the time I had maybe 5% of my SKUs up on Amazon and I put all my stuff on Amazon and bro, that year was a crazy year because this had to be 2008 and everybody knows what happened in 2008. The economy fell apart. And had I not done that, I don't know where I would have been because at least it had upped my income. And then, of course, really from 2009, 10, 11, 12, the curve of Amazon for third party really took off. And I just happened to ride 
that wave as well. At the same time, in 2009, I got asked to speak and teach, you know, other e-commerce sellers. It wasn't really e-commerce, it was eBay sellers. I got to go to Australia and do a keynote there for e-commerce at the Retail Global Show, which is run by a friend of mine, Phil. And I don't know, I got off stage that night and me and Phil were hanging out. And he's like, dude, you, you rock the stage, man. You need, to, you need to be a speaker. And so that kind of was the beginning of my little speaking career. And, you know, you know, I've done a lot since then. I mean, give me a break. It's, it's been a real roller coaster ride. So it's awesome. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, that's super cool. You know, I remember when I first got started, you know, with e-commerce, I started with Craigslist and I was flipping bicycles wow. and I thought that was like the only thing I was going to be doing because I flipped like a couple hundred of them. You know, I was working at the Cracker Barrel making like 12 bucks an hour with tips and I'm flipping these bicycles for like a hundred dollars, $200 profit. And for like, you know, four or five months straight, I'm just killing it. And I'm like, I'm going to be flipping bikes my whole life. And yeah. a lot of people we get in, you know, we get into a particular e-commerce business, whether it's Craigslist or eBay or Shopify or your own website. And you think that's the way it's going to always be sometimes, at least for me, right? Everyone's different, but isn't it amazing? The journey of like, you start somewhere and it's like a stepping stone to the next best thing. And it's funny, you know, the flipping houses led to the eBay, which led to, you know, Amazon and speaking engagements. And I know you're author of a best-selling book as well. It's yeah. just, it's amazing. You know, so, so 2008, 2012, you're you're playing around with third party selling on Amazon. What, what's it like in 2008? You know how many people, 2008 Amazon FBA is like investing in like 2011 Bitcoin, right? It's like, uh, oh, wow. What is, what is that even like? You know what I mean? Like, like it is. how do you even ship something into the FBA warehouses 2008? Did they like, did you have to like send a letter to them and then they like approved your shipment? Like, oh, well, see, I, we didn't do, they didn't have FBA at that time. I don't know oh, when so they it's came not up with FBA. I don't. I, maybe they did, but I wasn't using. I didn't use FBA. Oh, third party and, selling. They're just allowing yeah. other sellers. I'm sorry. I'm getting confused yeah. with the whole. I should know better. I obviously. <laughs> right. I did. I did merchant fulfilled. I didn't start doing oh. FBA until I was forced to. Right. Until Prime really started taking off, and then they started favoring Prime over regular merchant fulfilled and all that kind of crap. You know, and so, but one one thing you do make a very good point about is that. And what year did you start uh, doing the bike flip? Uh, that was probably 2013. Okay, 2000. Wow, really? Yeah, and the funny thing is, I didn't even find out really about Amazon until like 2015 or so. I was just so okay. like in the trenches with like eBay. Got it. But yeah. yeah, got it. So the deal is, I mean, it went through a lot of iterations. It was very clunky. The back end was a pain in the butt, you know, Seller Central was just, <laughs> you know, and that's what kept me off of the platform for so long because oh, it was really? totally different than eBay. You know, Amazon's always been attached to a single <laughs> SKU, multiple sellers per SKU, where a eBay was multiple sellers, no matter what SKU, you could have multiple sellers and it could, they weren't tied to the SKU itself, right? So Amazon's always been like, if you've got that SKU, everybody lists under it. And so it was a different planet for me to even try to think that way. But, you know, now it's kind of everybody is into it. They understand it. But uh, no, nah, it was it was very clunky. It was cool, though. It was cool, but <laughs> nothing like the volume you see today. Nothing yeah, like you know. That. Amazon FBA and just Amazon in general is a really, really trendy topic right now. Like I even notice a lot of people on like the warrior forums and like affiliate marketers, like two years yep. ago, none of these guys were promoting Amazon. There's like yep. so many courses coming out now and people promoting it. It's almost in a sense, it kind of reminds me of like, I don't know if you see any similarities to like real estate when everyone was like talking about it. I just feel like everybody's talking about Amazon right now. Yeah, Maybe it's because yeah. I'm in this space, but what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's a really trendy it's over, big brother. opportunity? No, it's over. Once everybody starts talking about it, once the inner, look, I'll never forget. I can't remember who said this, but it's an old saying, marketers ruin everything. That's Gary look Vaynerchuk said that. 
Nah, give, give me Vanderchuk said it. He ain't making up. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That was there's Ty very Lopez. little. <laughs> no. There's very little. Look, there's nothing new under the sun, guys. Right. So the deal is, when you hear a lot of us today talking, we're talking out of wisdom that is old as like the ancients. All right sales and business. You don't need to read the latest book. You need to read the best book. You need to read the old book, you know? So Gary didn't make that up. Marketers do ruin everything. And the reason why they do is because by the time they get to something, it's already established. That's how they can market it. And what ends up happening is that the flood, because if you buy pretty much most of these courses, like 90% of the courses, are full of things that are either bad practices to take shortcuts, you know what I'm saying? They they still have it updated based on new rules on a platform and things like that. So what it ends up doing is bringing in a lot of unskilled labor mm -hmm. and they lower the bar for entry, <clears throat> right? And once that happens, what what's going to happen here? Because see, I've lived through this already. This is what happened with eBay back in 2008. 2007, 2006, everybody was eBay, eBay courses, right? What that did is start flooding the market with all these unskilled eBay people. And they would do bad practices in terms of customer fulfillment, taking shortcuts and all that. And then what the platform has to do is they have to up their rules to try to weed out the bad fish. And I've noticed and that already get, with Amazon. Exactly. So you're going to get whales caught in the tuna net. And that's what we're we're going to start seeing, you know. So, so what what advice do you have for somebody who, you know, they want to get into e-commerce right now? You know, do you do you see any any good opportunities? Because you've got a lot of wisdom and experience. There's so many opportunities online, right? Right, right. And um, you, know, you talk a lot of, a lot about it in your Facebook group and everything, which links will be down below if you guys want to check that out. But where does somebody start right now? Because there is so much hype around, you know, building your own websites and YouTube and eBay and Amazon and private label and wholesale. And it's just like, I just had a, uh, a call with one of my subscribers earlier. He was really struggling because he said, I want to start a blog. I want to start YouTube. I want to start Amazon. I want to start this and that. And I'm like, you got to calm down and you got to choose something because if you're going in a million directions, you're not going to get anything done. So how does somebody you know, deal with this fast paced environment where there's so many things going on. So many people saying, do this, do that. What are your thoughts on that, John? I think that, look, if you go and you ever been to the Grand Canyon, it's pretty grand. I it's haven't. The big I, hole, I, I, you know, the big there. hole around, uh, you know, and it goes around mountains and all that stuff. Guess what? It was started with a drop of water, you know? Mm. So the deal is, is that a single drop of water focused in on a rock will dissipate a rock. But rain will, the rock will still always be there, you know, or pretty much for a long, long time. So right. it's the focus of the single drip that is most important. So when it comes to e-commerce, there's a lot of opportunity, right? Focus in on one of them. None of them, in my opinion, are better than the other. Hmm. None of them are better than the other. But a lot of times people will be, you know, I'm doing, you know, flips. <laughs> right now from retail and it's like oh everybody's talking about private label let me jump over here you know because what happens is is that the grass is always greener on the other side right find your niche focus in on it and once and here's the key once you've mastered that that's when it's time to start looking at other opportunities wow become a master all right don't be a jack of all trades master something if you're the best at something you're going to get the return on the results that you've put in, you know, just master it, bro. Are you a believer in having multiple income streams? Because a lot of times, you know, you know, people will say just master one thing. And I'm, I'm always wondering, you know, and you just mentioned it, do you mean just master one thing and only focus on that? Or is it okay to, for example, master, maybe you get really, really good at eBay. And we're not even talking about like being right, a teacher right. or a YouTube channel, but we're talking about like someone who wants to like, you know, generate revenue and, and grow their business and whatnot. Is it okay in your mind to get really good at eBay and put some systems in place and make money from that and then maybe move to Amazon and then six months down the road, maybe write your own book? What, do you mind clarifying yeah, on I that got, point? I feel you. See, here's, here's been my thought. It's like mastery 
in, in, in my opinion, will allow you to expand on that platform. Right. So the deal is, I know a lot of people's like, dude, I'm selling, you know, widget A on a, on eBay. I need to learn how to sell widget A on Amazon. I'm like, you know what? Honestly, if you really want to maximize your profits, you should learn how to sell widget B on eBay. Then widget C on eBay. Widget D, you see what I'm saying? You expand in the area where you're already a master at. And then maybe you go over and learn Amazon. But if you really are, you know, if you've mastered eBay, then bringing on another revenue stream right to that platform is way easier than you trying to learn another platform. It really is. I, I mean, people can argue with me all you want, but if you recognize and you look at, you know, what certain companies and organizations do, they always, they always have this base that they that they run with. Even Amazon, Amazon's got a base. Look, if you couldn't talk to Echo, you know, or, or Alexa and order stuff from Amazon, they would have never brought it out. That's still based on the fact that they want to sell products from Amazon. So focus, guys, focus and expand from that area is just a, a way better thing because the shiny object is always going to be there. There's mm -hmm. always going to be some shiny new thing that we could jump into. And yes, I do believe in multiple streams of income. I absolutely believe that. I just don't necessarily think that that multiple stream has got to mean you got to be doing it somewhere totally different. It could be right there where you're at and master that first. Do you think personality type plays a big role in, in choosing what, what income stream to go after or what platform to sell on? Is there some sort of self-assessment that, that you'd recommend to, to, to each person when they start thinking about, you know, the business model they want to get into, or, you know, if it's conducive to kind of, you know, jump around and build different income streams. Cause I know some people like for my, for example, I'm a Gemini man, I'm all over the place. I've been ADD my whole entire life. You know, it's not always the smartest move to jump from thing to thing. I know a hundred percent sure. You can't but help it. I'll kill myself <laughs> if I do the same thing over and over again. Me too. Me too. So like in, I get it. My, in my business, John, like I've got probably eight or nine different income streams. If I was a different personality type, I know I could probably make just as much or even way more just focusing on one thing. But my brain, it's just wired I differently. That's just me though. Do you think that this is common amongst a lot of other people where they've got to really think about who they are and their personality type before starting something? Or is it like, you know what, just jump in and, and see what happens? Here's the deal. I find that most of the most of the entrepreneurs that I run into absolutely could be uh, adult ADD, all right? I just think that's who we are because I'm one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not focused on things all the time, you know? I'm all over the place. I love it. It's exciting to me. It keeps me alive. I'm always on to the next thing. That I'll, I'll build something <laughs> up and I'm like, I want to run somewhere else. So if you know that is your personality type, what will help you grow even further than you're currently at, not you specifically, but for people with that, oh, I'm you, listening. Want to, you want to partner with somebody that's the opposite. Ooh, I like that. Okay. So having two ADD people running a company together is a bad thing. Having somebody that's very detail oriented, plus the guy that's ADD, then you're going to get the right marriage. So if you look at like Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, two different personalities totally, that brought a fourth, what we we know today as Apple. So when you start, you know, like when I, right now, my, uh, my uh, executive assistant, she is huge on all the points, the bullet points, drives me crazy. You know, <laughs> she, she'll come in. The first, the first part of our meeting is, well, did you do what you said we were going to do on Wednesday? I'm like, really? You're holding me to that? But the fact that she <laughs> holds me to that makes my business move forward. Mm -hmm. So you have to know what your weaknesses are. And shiny object syndrome, ADD, is a weakness in us. So we partner up with people that are more focused. And that will help us move forward. So we'll keep going on the example of, of the ADD type 
like myself, the Gemini's out there, the people like running around doing a bunch of different things, us entrepreneurs in general, a lot of them. Let's talk a little bit about hiring people, maybe virtual assistants. Would you say it's smart if you are, I don't know if it's type A or type B, which one the ADD person is, but is it, would it be smart to hire the opposite? Like when you say partnering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. They so can you can actually be your go out partner, there and hire. Or they could be somebody you hire to help you stay focused. Where do you go to hire virtual assistants or hire staff for your, for your online business? Or where do you recommend? Of, there's a, okay. Yeah. Is there anything? I like online jobs, PH. All right. Online jobs. That PH. That's a Philippines. That's for, that's for Philippines, yeah. right? Why do I like the Philippines? Because English is their second language. So they understand English. They don't speak it well a lot of times, right? In terms of, you are actually, you know what? They can speak it good enough, but a lot of times if you want them to write stuff for you, it's not right, going to happen yeah. because the way, yeah, they're not able <laughs> like to do never. that, right? Yeah. Really, it's very hard to find somebody that can totally write the way that we write as Americans in English. But when it comes to getting work done, I like the Philippines because of the time difference. All right. So the time difference allows me to give them work before I go to bed. And when I wake up, they're working overnight. The work that I need done is already done when I wake up in the morning. So I like that. And like I said, it's easy for me to communicate with those guys. That's great. If you want somebody on the same time zone, I've found great workers in South America. And I found mm. those on Upwork, right? Yep. So you can find people on Upwork. So that's so we got online jobs, PH. We got Upwork. The other place that I actually find good people is Fiverr. And I don't use Fiverr. I use Twentier. All right. That's a different Fiverr. Really? And what's that? What? Yeah. Twentier. Twentier. Yeah. Write that there. Look, he's writing it down. Don't write that down. What that means is I hire four people to do the five dollar work. Out of those four, one of them <laughs> are going to be really good at what they do. You see what I'm saying? Somebody that usually somebody stands out. And that's the person I give the, ma the major amount of work. So let's say I've got 10 things I need done, right? Maybe I've got 10 logos I need to do or 10 blog posts I need to write. I will have four people write one single blog post. Whoever's got the best writing out of that gets the other nine. Feel me? And so once you start that relationship, then you start talking to them, you get their, you know, their Skype ID and boom, you have a relationship with that person and they can become part of your team. Would you say eBay sellers out there would benefit from, from a virtual assistant in your experience? I don't, I, here's my thing is I don't, I don't say hire somebody just for the sake of hiring somebody. Hire because you need to hire somebody. You got to know what they're going to do before you put them in the position, you know? So just saying, oh, I don't like writing product ads. Let's hire somebody to do that for me. Is that going to be the best way to do that? I don't know. Not especially when you can just outsource that single thing without having to bring somebody in on your team. You know, I can literally pay you know, there's companies out there I can pay to just do that kind of work and just pay them to do it versus actually bringing somebody in, training them, being responsible for them, you know. So, you know, when I've my thing is, is that hiring people, you have to understand that when you hire somebody, guys, you are almost becoming a parent and there's responsibility mm -hmm. to that. It's like right now I'm free to do whatever I want because I'm an independent, right? As soon as you got a team, you are not free anymore. You know, now you are somewhat committed to making sure those guys get the work that they need to do. So, so balance it out and know what, what, what's going to happen and make sure that they're coming into some kind of a structured environment that helps. So the first person I ever hired was, was to, to actually put structure in place. That was the first thing I did. It's like, look, all I want you to do is follow me, find out what I do, and write it down. That's all she did for so like important. six months. Yeah, she just put processes in place. Then we hired in for the process that was already in place. Yeah, that's that's really really important because 
actually for this show itself, the Rake and Profit show, there's a lot that goes into it from, you know, finding guests to coordinating everything to recording it, creating blog posts, podcasts, uploading on YouTube descriptions, thumbnails. There's like a lot of different things, editing the video, editing the podcast. And mm. what, what I actually did is I utilized a free software called Trello, Trello.com. And essentially what we did is we spent literally about a week creating all these different boards. And it was essentially a workflow from step one all the way to step 12. And it really makes a big difference when you're working with people. If you can see how everything is happening yes. and be able to, because it's so time consuming. Like, you know, I still, here's another story. I remember hiring my first person uh, in my eBay business like three years ago. And I thought, oh my God, my whole life is going to be easier. Like they're going <laughs> to do all my photographs and list all my items. And before I knew it, John, I'm like, holy crap, this sucks. Like, I want to go out and like hang out with my friends, but you know, my buddy Vinny's expecting me at the office now work, I have to go yeah. over there and bring clothes. And I'm like, I felt handcuffed. And yes. not only that, like there's so many different things you have to do, John, to like manage, like you had, like you had mentioned responsibility, paying them, making sure they're doing their work, quality control. Like yes. it's just like, it's crazy, man, that you know, hiring people isn't the, the be all end all. There's a no. lot of things that go into it. That's a whole nother job. Are you just adding another job <laughs> to your already job? You know? <laughs> yes, it is. So yeah. Cool, man. Uh, awesome. Thanks for shedding light on that. I want to take a second to define because I had I had to in Steve Rakin fashion create a a nice cool clickbaity title and <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is the lazy laptop lifestyle? Uh, the lazy laptop life. You know, what is it? Like define it because I know it's a fun, interesting yeah. title that gets people excited. Like, like is is it just like sitting back on the beach with coronas? No, collecting it's not. your it's absolutely what is it? It's absolutely not. That is the ultimate goal, right? <laughs> it's to really get to lazy laptop. And and the deal is. I'm never going to be lazy. I just, I'm not hardwired to be lazy, right? I, I mean, we talked about Gary. I mean, can you imagine Gary just sitting somewhere on a beach chilling? I just can't imagine it, you know? And I, I'm, I'm like that too. I can't ever see that. But the lazy part in that for me, and I've, I've really been saying, I need to get an acronym for the lazy. <laughs> really, the lazy is, is about the processes. The processes help you to make oh. it so that you're lazy. All right. So and then a laptop is being, you know, connected, but disconnect. And I really wanted to, you know, originally I wanted it to be this laptop lifestyle. All right. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't make it work with the cell phone laptop lifestyle. That's the next version. But in reality, I really want to run my entire business from this device. That's my ultimate goal. But on the pathway to getting there, I know that people that are starting from scratch or starting from chaos need to be able to bring in all of the tools that they're going to need to remove some of that chaos, make it, bundle it so that somebody else can help them with that work to give them more time and opportunity to grow their business and to, you know, if you want to be lazy, dude, trust me, there are some days when the cat crawls in my lap and I'm like, you know what? I'm not moving. Oh, I'm just going to watch. Right. So I do have those lazy moments, you know, and most people don't get that. So I'm already living that thing. I'm just, you know, and I do go and sip drinks on the beach a lot, too. I mean, I get to go a lot of cool places. Yeah, that's cool. So it's like it's more or less like it's not that you're lazy, but it's the ability to be lazy if you please. And that's freedom. In yeah, my that's opinion. freedom. Like that's that's you know what I mean? Like if I want to work my butt off, like. And I get to actually make that choice. I don't mind doing it. And like, for one reason, like you mentioned, the cat crawls up the, you know what, you're just tired. You don't want to do anything. Like yeah. you had that option to be lazy. And you made a great point, John, saying, you know, systems, putting systems in place will allow you to be lazy. How do people chill out and like calm down and actually take some time to put a system in place? Because everyone's running the rat race. A lot of people, and they're so busy in their business that, they never take a step back to actually put a system in place. How does someone how does someone get to that point where they they can actually take a step back from their business and start to look at it, okay, 
this is what I need to do differently. This is a system I need to create so I can take myself out of it. Do you have any advice? Yeah, start documenting it. You know, start writing down every step that you do. That's the beginning of putting a system in place. You know, just like you said, you had the Trello, you know, which is basically you can do that on a whiteboard. You know, here's step one, step two, step three. Once you have those steps together, you are at the beginning of making a process. So step one, put the item in the box, right? Well, what's the process around putting an item in the box? You got to know exactly what size box it's going to need. Does it need any extra packaging, mm. you know, for padding? We need to know that. You feel what I'm saying, though? It's There's like, so okay, where's things, the box yeah. sit? You need to go, go over there and grab that box. All of those things. So first, just write down what you're doing. Then you're going to go back and figure out what are all the steps to get to what you're doing. And bam, now you've got a process for something you do. And your documents, your documents on process should be that I can walk in, hand that person a doc, and they can get the outcome that they're supposed to need. And so until you hand it off to somebody, you'll never know if the process is right. Right? When you hand I it off to somebody, you agree more. Yeah, you hand it, they'll find holes in your process. And I, yeah, exactly. I was already going to take it, take it a step further and say, don't try to make your system perfect because you have no idea what's going to happen when that, when that plan gets tested out. Like when I was putting together the show and there was literally 30 to 40 moving pieces, I spent, I went to Myrtle beach with my friend Dave and we, we mastermind literally every single week about our businesses. And we meet up a couple times a year. We went to the Myrtle, we went to Myrtle Beach. We had a hotel in the ocean. We were just masterminding processes and systems for literally three days straight. And I put this whole entire genius system together and I ended up hiring graphic designer, video editor. I brought my, my full-time VA on and everything. And right when I went through it, like nothing was working, like this was wrong, that was wrong, hold here, hold there, hold there, never explain this. What does this mean? And it's just like, like you said, just get started and test out that system. And real quick, you're going to find out, okay, this works, this doesn't work. But really, really good advice. Uh, John, I want to transition over to something that I hold near and dear to my heart, which is with health and fitness. And I had mentioned earlier before the show that one thing that I respected about you, and you know, I have nothing against people who only talk about business and money, and it's cool. Like, you know, that's the industry. Like, that's what most people are interested in. But I really respected the fact that on your social media, you post a lot of like health stuff and update pictures and like little selfies from the gym. And I find it really motivating, man. Do you mind kind of like sharing your story? Cause I know you had quite the transformation. Oh. I saw some pictures that were just like, wow. Yeah, I was like 300 plus. When I hit 300, I never got on the scale again. So I don't know where it started at, you know, but. I mean, basically, one day I went into the doctor's office and I already knew I had diabetes. I already knew that. I was taking medicine for it, right? And every, every time I went to the doctors, they would give me more diabetes medicine. This time I went to the doctor, they took my A1C, and she said to me, I think we're probably going to have to think about putting you on insulin. I was like, like shots, insulin? She's like, Yeah. I was like, okay, that's just not going to happen. I just, that, that was like, I think, you know, I think everybody, real. yeah, not, it, it, I internalized that. I, it, it was, it became something that internalized for me after all these years, I've been overweight, you know, I'm still overweight, but I was not health conscious at all. And that just, it, it made me think. And at the same time, I remember I had gotten a gig to go to Japan. And cool. I knew I couldn't walk long, <laughs> you know, 30 minutes, I mean, maybe was a, a stretch for me, you know? And I'm like, I got to see Japan. And, and if, I'm, if I can't even walk around, it's going to be a problem. So I that day I got in and went and started walking on a treadmill. And that was the beginning. And my, my goal was to walk on the treadmill for 30 minutes so I could see Japan, you know, oh, cool. and everything else kind of just came out of that. I was like, you know, starting to feel better. And I was like, well, you know, I probably need to do eat better, you know, because of my blood sugar and just everything started falling into place. And I ended up after never going to a gym ever. It's like, I'm going to go to the gym as soon as we get off of this thing. 
you know, because that's just who I am awesome. now, you know, and I heard your journey and that's awesome. I just, you know, you, you, here's the thing, guys, no matter how much money you make, if you're not here to enjoy it, what's the purpose? Mm. You know, what's the purpose? And you've got your family, all these things you claim you care about and you don't take care of yourself. Think about that. How do you care for your children and you're not going to be here to see their children? I don't get it. You know, all these things would play in my head. I'm like, you got to do something. And look, people, you're talking about how do you get yourself together? How do you spend that 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 time to get your mind right? That 30 minutes on the treadmill was my opening to being able to think better because I didn't have nothing else to really do. I couldn't check. I wasn't checking Twitter. You know, I wasn't checking Facebook. You couldn't message me during that time. I had literally carved out that time I never thought I had for myself to think. And that's how it, you got to do it, guys. Do it. All right. I love I'm it. Done. No, it's uh, I'm <laughs> soapbox moment, moment over. <laughs> <laughs> man, uh, I already went to the gym today, but now I feel like I got to go back again, man. Yeah, John Lawson back. bringing the motivation, man. <laughs> John Robbins, Tony John Robbins in the house right now. Oh, I love man. it, man. It's, yeah, yeah, I love some Tony Robbins too. Have you have you been I'm to one of those? Oh, you're going. I have you have, haven't been before? You've been on the. You've been yep. before. Yep, I have, walked and the, I, I walked. walked the, uh, yep, yep, I walked on so it. You going back to walk? I'm going back again. I'm going to. The San funny Diego. thing is, in March, I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to a, a private label conference. Going directly to the Tony Robbins right after that, and then I'm flying directly to Russell Brunson's. Then you're gonna uh, see Tony again. Exactly, Tony again. So I'm gonna be seeing Tony, a lot Tony. of Tony Robbins. I, you know, I think it's important. I think. It's, it's, uh, you know, your mind, your body, it's, it's so important when it comes to business and entrepreneurship, because, you know, when you run a business, there's so many ups and downs and highs and lows and peaks and valleys, you know, if you don't feel good about yourself, sometimes it's just, it's a challenge to deal with the reality of, of, of different things that are going on. So definitely, yeah, I, you know what, uh, it's funny. I think about six months into that journey, I got to go to a Tony event the first time. Oh, cool. And, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it would have had the same effect on me had I not already started that journey. It, it might have made me feel really, you know, less than. Exactly. But it so elevated me to a whole other level, and I think that was like it solidified my commitment to myself. You know, and you know, it that the, I, I'm thinking about going back. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. But I'm thinking about. It. I just Amen. saw him a couple of months in the. Ago here and uh, because him and Gary came here. Uh, what was it, October? And where are you from? So, Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta. Okay, cool. Yeah, so they did. They did a, a, a both of them. Him, Gary, and somebody else on stage. That's a lot of energy, man, in one room. That's a lot. It was a lot, bro. <laughs> you know, but hey, it was a pitch fest between it, so it it lets you mellow out. You know, they had all these other speakers trying to pitch their real estate course. I'm like, dude, I'm here for two people. I'll hang out in the hallway for the rest of that crap. You know, you ever gone to the uh, Millionaire Mind Intensive? It's by uh, Harv Ecker, Harv T. Ecker. I don't know if you know. Ever... I've heard of Harv yeah. T. Ecker. Yes. The funny thing is it was a, it was a, it was a free like three day workshop. And I'm like, what's going to happen here? Like I've never been to a They're free. They're going to sell you something. Yeah. And I just got like hit over and over with like over all these different opportunities. I, it was just, I just wasn't expecting it. I'm like, I'm a big fan of courses and stuff. Like if you pick the right ones and like, I feel like it really shortens your learning curve, but I wasn't expecting it. It was just like, holy, holy mackerel. But no, hey, any, you know um, what? No, I was just going to say this. You Next time you go, pull out your calculator and determine how much money was just made in that damn room. It's crazy. I'll be I like, I mean, I know how I was sitting next to this one lady at this place. She bought at least four things. At three to well, five thousand dollars a piece, I'm like, damn, y'all crazy. Well, when you when you go to these big conferences, I actually like to take notes and watch the sales pitches because you learn a lot learn. about um, psychology and yep. like looping stories and stuff. Like, there's all yep. these different techniques and like, for example, like I was watching a Russell Brunson webinar the other day, and he mentioned like it was a cool technique. He's like, throughout the whole entire show, about twenty or thirty times, I'll ask people questions that. Have them say yes. Oh, is the sky blue? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Is a nickel worth five cents? Would yes. you love to make money selling online? And then it's just like, would you buy my course? And 
Then I'm a big like yes. Like I love college. Like I'm not crapping on courses, but I think it's important to find the right one. And you made a really good point earlier. Things are changing so fast. If you guys do invest in a course, make sure that it is up to date. Make sure that it's taught by somebody who's actually teaching it and, and going through the process. It's really, really important. It really is. But anyways, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent right now. Any final words that you have for people, John, in terms of, you know, getting started with e-commerce, any advice that you, you know, any big mistakes you see people making, anything that you could give as final words to really help the people out and the listeners? I just want you to know about this business. I, I don't know. I mean, I know the people that I started out with. All right. I used to be part of something called PISA at the time, and it doesn't even exist anymore. It was a professional eBay sellers association. And literally it was a couple of hundred maybe of the top sellers on eBay. If I go back and would go down that list and do a check and see how many of those people are still existing in this business, probably maybe 10% of them are, oh, wow. right? 90% of them are gone. So you have to understand and think about this, guys. You know, the promised land is not being promised to you today. Even though they're promising you the promised land, it's going to take work and you are going to have to be prepared to pivot. I should own that. You got to be prepared to pivot in the economy. I like that. Come I do nice. too. Yeah, because it, it constantly is changing. This is technology. And as technology changes, our business gets hit every time. You know, there are businesses right now that they thought would be around for thousands of years that are scrambling right now because of technology and what Amazon's doing. Trust me. Right now, we were just talking about, you know, uh, that's another thing too, guys. I, I didn't mention this. I got something called Watching Amazon. So if you go to watchingamazon.com, if you're interested in Amazon, we watch Amazon as a whole, as a business entity and a technology company. And we were just talking about how one of the biggest technology shows is going on right now, CES. I know this is pre-recorded, but at CES, nobody is talking about Apple. Who would have thought that Amazon right. would be, right? With the Echo device is just, it's it's overshadowing anything and Apple is totally missing the, the train on um, home devices. I know they'll come in, but don't ever think that you've got it nailed and this is gonna be the way it is. Cause one button, Amazon changed one button, eBay changed one thing that made us scramble overnight, right? Overnight, our business model got blown up, you know? So you gotta be ready, man. If you're ready, you, this is not for the weak. E-commerce is not for the weak. If you wanna be weak, just sell a course. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was, I was in a, a thrift store. This was probably like six months ago and I was scanning books. I was using my smartphone to scan books. And this, this older gentleman, I'm not even kidding with you. I think I shared this on a video. And I'm going to kind of just make up the story a little bit because I don't remember exactly what happened. But in a sense, he came over and he gave me like a dirty look. And he said something along the lines of like, you guys are ruining the market, you and your scanners or something like that. You know, I handpick them. I have the knowledge to find it. And I'm kind of giving like, making a okay. negative thing out of it. But like, he was really upset and angry. and. I didn't say anything mean back or anything because I, you know, I respect everyone's opinion, but I was just like, I said something along the lines of like, hey, you can't get mad at the market and technology. Like things are changing. Like, and I'm just thinking oh. to myself, like, you're, it's so right. Like you can get mad at technology and the market and the way things are, but like, if you're not willing to change, you're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Adjust or die. Cause it's just not, it's not going to wait for you. It's not going to wait for you. That's, that's, and I know so many people, we were just, uh, talking about that too. It's like, you know, part of the reason why certain people are like not around anymore is just because they refused to change with the times. And look, our entire industry is built on technology. You know, if you don't want to change with the tech, then obviously it's going to leave you and you're going to be struggling right. at some point. We have to change. And, yeah. and, be, and be willing to learn because one little new technology yes, you learn, constantly. one new software, 
like for example like think before like jungle scout and like these different things like viral launch that are helping people find products like imagine trying to find a product on your own like you could but there's like one little thing you learn right could extreme like just scale your business like 100x right yeah and it's, it's like crazy. it's crazy it's like dang <laughs> you just said one i didn't even know about what viral launch okay i'm gonna check that one out you know? <laughs> all right my but man. there's well, always John something new yeah, it, it never ends and it's it's not going to stop in three years down the road, maybe a year down the road. A lot of the stuff that I mentioned in my videos, it's going to be obsolete. It's just going to be new, new things, new ways to go about business. And it's just the way it is. So anyways, John, John Lawson, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on lazylaptoplife.com. Be sure to check them out. I'm also going to link up the, the funny Ty Lopez video. Uh, down below <laughs> as well. And anything else you want me to link up, John, social media or whatnot, I will link up in the show notes as well. But man, thank you so much for coming on. It was a ton of fun. And uh, hopefully I'll bump into you maybe at one of the, the conferences this year. Yeah, Are you going back to Ace again? Yeah, if they have it, if they invite me, I'm coming, man. You know, once I get inside the family, man, I can't help but come back. Can't leave, man. You know, so yes, absolutely. I'll be back. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor, hit the like button on YouTube. If you could leave an honest review on iTunes, if you enjoyed it or any feedback, feel free to do that as well. Go check out John, lazylaptoplife.com and really, really appreciate you guys. Thanks, John, and see you in the next video.